Did you know that it is actually possible to resist any type of temptation that you may face no matter what? In this video, I'm gonna give you four very practical and tangible things that you need to do so that you can resist temptation the next time the enemy comes to tempt you. That's coming up today on The Beat. Hey my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. Hey, if you wanna know the entire story of the Bible, I've got a free ebook. Click the link in the description box below. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. Hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. Okay, so sometimes whenever you get tempted, I mean, the temptation is so strong that everything in your flesh wants to yield to that particular temptation, whether it's a sexual temptation, whether it's pornography, whether it's a temptation for lust or more or coveting or whatever it is, everything in you wants to yield. But my friend, good news for you, I'm gonna give you four things that I really want you to consider the next time you are tempted, and we're gonna take all of these out of the story of where Jesus himself was tempted. So I encourage you to meet me in Matthew chapter four, starting in verse one. Notice it says here, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. So the first thing that I really want you to consider is that being tempted, strongly tempted, does not necessarily mean you are in sin. And the reason why I say that is because many times the enemy will cause you to feel like, well, man, because I'm being so strongly tempted to look at that pornography website or to spend the night at my girlfriend's house or to fornicate or to commit adultery or whatever your struggle is, then since I'm being so strongly tempted by this thing, I already feel like I've yielded anyway. And so therefore, what benefit really is it of me to really stop right now anyway, because I've already yielded to the temptation. So therefore, I might as well go on and enjoy the rest of it. My friend, Jesus himself was tempted just because you feel and experience a strong temptation to do sin does not mean that you've actually yielded to that sin. It means there's still an opportunity for you to turn away from that particular temptation and get victory in that area. Now, the second thing that I'm gonna talk about is extremely important in terms of your ability to consistently and successfully resist the temptation of the devil. And that is found here in verse two. It says here, for 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very angry. So here's my second principle. If you want to resist temptation, you have to prepare yourself spiritually before the temptation comes. Notice here that Jesus was fasting here for 40 days. What does that mean? That means his inner spirit man was built up. He was under the influence of the spirit of God. So whenever you spend time with God in prayer, whenever you spend time with God in his word, whenever you spend time with God through fasting and all of these different spiritual disciplines, what you're doing is you are building up your inner man. You're building up your spirit. You're building up your resistance. So much, so much like a wall, if you will. Think of it like a wall that is so deep that it's difficult for, this, for the enemy to penetrate through that wall because you've got so many different spiritual defenses that have been built up because you have put in the time to prepare yourself spiritually for that particular attack that the enemy wants to unleash. But if you don't prepare yourself spiritually beforehand, and if you're basically living in the world and you're being influenced by what you see on TV and in the media and all the sensuality that you see all over the place, music that you listen to, and your defenses are basically down, then you are gonna be a sitting duck for the enemy whenever that temptation comes your way You'll be, you won't have any spiritual defenses up. And the reality is that you will more than likely yield to that particular temptation. So what's the point of this one? Don't wait to prepare yourself for the temptation 
whenever you're being tempted, put the work in on the front end, because my friend, I can tell you from experience, whenever I'm spending time with God and really enjoying his presence, I don't even want to yield to whatever temptation that the enemy sends my way because my spirit man is so full of God's truth. Now, the third thing that I'm gonna tell you is also very, very important and it's found in verse three. It says, during that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Now, what I wanna say here is you have to anticipate the type of temptation that the enemy is gonna send your way. I want you to notice here that Satan didn't tempt Jesus with drugs or alcohol or some other sort of vice, but he understood that Jesus hadn't eaten anything in 40 days and he was gonna be hungry as the scriptures say. So what did he do? He tailored his temptation to basically focus on Jesus' area of greatest weakness. So my friend, you have to know your greatest weakness. You have to know your triggers. And here's the point. Don't purposely do things that would contribute to maximizing the degree of the temptation. This is how we get in trouble, right? So if you know that you're struggling with pornography and lust, then you need to get some internet filters on every single device that you have so that you can't even access those videos so that you're not even tempted whenever those videos used to just pop up on your screen or you're just having a weak moment and you're going through your phone. Or let's say that you and your girlfriend or your boyfriend are struggling with fornication and you guys get together and you're always having sex, right? Then you need to make sure that you are dating according in a, in a public way, not late at night, but in a public fashion. That's how you get past temptation is not having confidence in your flesh and not assuming that you can, you can uh, uh, resist this particular temptation. You need to make sure that you are doing your part to minimize how many temptations come your way rather than just putting yourself out there so that the enemy can tempt you in many different ways. So my fourth point is for you to consider the consequences before you yield to temptation. My friend, this is so important. I really, really want you to get this because if you can really think about playing this decision all the way out before you yield, you will come to the conclusion that this is not good for you. See, the enemy wanted Jesus to jump off of this cliff and then think about the consequences later. But God would have us to think about the consequences first so that we do not jump or yield. The enemy wanted Jesus to believe, hey, even if you jump, it's no big deal because the scriptures say that God is gonna give his angels charge concerning you so that you won't even hurt your foot up against a stone. And that's the same thing that the enemy wants to pour, pour into your mind is, hey, if you sin, it's okay because the scriptures say you're forgiven and God will uh, give you grace in this situation. But as Jesus said, he says, yes, that may be true, but you don't want to put the Lord to the test. I don't want to test God and force him to discipline me just because I want to have some fun. So the next time you are tempted, I want to give you seven questions that I really want to encourage you to ask. And I hope that these seven questions are a template in your mind that you'll just get in your mind so that the next time you're tempted, you'll just run through these questions. Question number one, how am I going to feel about this tomorrow? Because in the moment, my friend, you may feel really good and you may feel like giving into this temptation is what you're gonna need to give you some relief or to get you past whatever you're going through. But you have to think further than the moment and think, okay, when I wake up tomorrow, how am I really gonna feel about this particular decision? The second question that you wanna ask yourself is, how will this affect other people? My friend, unfortunately, most of the sins that we commit don't just affect us, but sadly, they they also affect those who are uh, our loved ones as well. For instance, you may think pornography is just something that you deal with, but my friend, if you're in a marriage relationship, I can tell you that it's also going to affect the intimacy that you may have with your husband or with your wife. So you always have to ask yourself, how will this particular temptation, if I yield to it, affect other people? The third question that I want you to ask yourself is, how is this going to affect my relationship with God? Is this going to cause some sort of guilt 
or shame or separation or conviction in my heart as it relates to how I relate to God. The next question that I really want you to ask is, how will I feel about sharing this particular decision with someone else later on down the road. So let's say that you are considering having sex before marriage, as many young people, as many single people do for that matter. You have to really ask yourself the question, if somebody asks me later on, how many people have I had sex with? Or when was the last time you had sex? Would I feel comfortable giving them an honest answer or would I be tempted to now lie because I'm ashamed of the decision that I made? The next question I want you to ask is, how will this affect my reputation? So let me tell you, as a single man for many, many years, I was tempted in all sorts of directions like many of you are. But one of the things that kept me pure as a single man was thinking about how is this going to affect my reputation as a man of God, as a minister? People knew me to be an upstanding man of God, but how would they know me if they found out that I was involved in some sort of sexual sin or some sort of sexual scandal. You have to play this thing all the way out so that you don't just get caught up in the moment. And so the next question that you really wanna ask yourself is, how is this decision going to affect my future life dreams and goals? And so what you wanna do here is you really wanna play this all the way out and say, if this decision goes the absolute worst possible way, I'm talking about the worst possible outcome that could come from this decision, will I still be able to meet my goals and dreams in life in the same time frame that I had originally scheduled? Oftentimes, whenever you play that thing out, you'll realize, oh, if this thing goes really bad, then it's gonna deter me from being able to do what it is I know I want to do in life. And then the last thing I'll say is, how will this affect those who are looking up to me, right? So there may be people in your life, whether it's your brothers or your coworkers or your friends or your family members or people in your small group or people that you're mentoring or discipling. Let's say something happens in your life where this sin is now not just a private sin, it's a public sin and it's exposed. You have to ask yourself the question, how is this going to affect their faith if they see that everything that I've been telling them is not even something that I'm practicing in my own life. So let's recap. Point number one, temptation in and of itself is not a sin. Point number two, prepare yourself spiritually before the temptation happens so that you'll have a defense up and you'll be able to withstand that temptation. Point number three, anticipate the type of temptation so that you don't contribute further to maximizing that level of temptation by putting yourself in bad situations. And then number four, consider all of the consequences before you yield rather than simply just getting caught up in the moment. So my friend, I hope that these four tips will really help empower you to resist temptation no matter what type of temptation you face. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.